so much to say How can I choose So much to say now How can I Beijing, capital city of China. Location of the famed Forbidden City, several great wall sites not too far away. Origin city for this famous dish, Peking duck. Perhaps you've heard of it. Twenty-two million people call this place home, and for a lot of them, they live in the older, somewhat more traditional alleyways of Beijing, known as the Hutongs. Today, we're going to explore these alleys, see who lives there and what life is like in traditional Beijing. But first, we need noodles. All right, sorry I didn't show you guys the entrance there, but my battery was dying, but I'll show you on the way out. Pretty classic little restaurant here um, in the Hutongs, like this is what I was talking about. You find these kind of scattered all around, these little mom and pop kind of hole in the wall, noodle shops and noodle soups, stuff like that. It's all gonna be in Chinese, so I use Google Translate to figure out what I'm actually eating. I ordered pork noodle. I don't know what type of pork meat. I don't know what else. All I know is he showed me some dough and he's making the noodles by hand back there in the kitchen. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. It's only 15 won, which is about $2, a little more than $2 US. And uh, yeah, this is probably the highlight of walking through these hutongs, finding places like this to eat and meet super friendly locals, you know? Uh, thank you. Shishi. Okay, so it's soup. Basically pork, pork noodle soup. All right, this looks freaking amazing, holy crap. These are nice, like, hand-pulled, thick noodles. Wow, god damn, that's good. Mm. Cilantro, scallions, noodles that were literally just made in the back five minutes ago. Nice porky broth. Mm. Wow. I could eat this all day. Look at the fat globules, just like swimming in here from the pork. Mm. It's been the one thing that I've noticed quite a bit about eating in China as opposed to some other countries in Asia is that when you go into a restaurant and you order noodles, especially a small place like this, many, many times they will make the noodles by hand right there, like from a bowl of dough. They will knead it and then they will cut the noodles and immediately cook them. And so you're eating completely like, not even like, like fresh noodles that were bought at the store, but like handmade fresh noodles. And it really makes a huge difference in the soup, the taste of it, the mouthfeel of the noodles. These are like a solid al dente. Mm. I need a spoon and I also want chili paste. A little spice. Spice up your life a little bit. Food in Beijing hasn't been that spicy, especially coming from Sichuan, where every single piece of food I put in my mouth was like really hot. But I always add a little bit of spice, no matter what I'm eating. See, everyone thinks the best noodle soups are in Vietnam, but in fact, in fact, the best noodle soups are in China. Fresh noodles, nice, heavy stock, Man, I could eat this all day, every day. And I might. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> oh, ooh. And back out into the tropical <laughs> Beijing heat. So, this is the spot. Um, and uh, yeah, I just kind of walked up upon it. And that's usually how I find my food when I travel, to be honest, most of the time. Um, 
can't tell you if I knew it was going to be good or not, but it ended up being amazing. Okay, so anyway, these are the hutongs. What is a hutong exactly? So Beijing is made up of many, many different neighborhoods that consist of just alleys that are essentially constructed with buildings that are constructed of this like gray slate brick and these uh, cement terracotta roofs. And they just kind of work their way through Beijing uh, like a big maze and they're called hutongs and they have names. And basically this is like old Beijing or what Beijing used to be, you know, back in the day, 50, 60 years ago, when it was only this. And modern day Beijing has, of course, been built up around it, around these hutongs, and some of them have obviously disappeared in the construction process, but Beijing is still holding on to some of this old culture. And you can find it in these hutongs. And these are real homes, like these are just people's homes and they live back here. You'll also find restaurants and convenience stores and all kinds of other stuff. Um, people just living their lives, going about their daily life. And so let's take a walk. Let's explore the hutongs here in the uh, Fucheng Men neighborhood is where I'm at. And at the end of this neighborhood, there's a temple called the White Dagoba Temple, which is supposed to be really, really spectacular and pretty. And uh, yeah, let's just take a walk through old Beijing and see, see, what, we've, see what we see, basically, now that we are uh, well fed. There's the stupa for the temple. I don't know if you can see it right there. So it looks like it's overlooking this whole neighborhood, which is really, really cool. Man, it is so hot today. 100 degrees today. Well, it is just brutal. And when you're back here in these alleyways, like the sun just beats off of this basically cement brick is what it is. And uh, it's like an oven. And so, like I said, these are just people's homes they probably get really annoyed by visitors like me coming through here and filming and taking pictures, but it's very interesting, you know, for people like me who come from the West and there's nothing even close to this in the United States of America that looks like this, nothing. And so it's really fascinating for me, at least coming from the United States to walk around and see this um, because we just don't have things like this where I come from. So this is a very quiet neighborhood. I wasn't sure what to expect if I was gonna come back here and find a lot of activity or not. I bet if you come back here at night when it's not so hot out after the sun sets, it's probably much, much busier. You'll see people on the street playing mahjong or cards or just sitting outside eating. A lot of families will, I've noticed in China, will set up a table outside of their house and eat dinner on the sidewalk. That's very common. Right now, middle of the day, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's roughly 40 degrees Celsius. It's ex extremely hot. So I'm not surprised it's very quiet. In a way, it makes it a bit more atmospheric. Man, beautiful day, despite the heat. This is actually the most sun I've seen since being in China. Many, many places I've gone, everywhere I've gone actually, except before Beijing, it's mostly been cloudy. But Beijing has been like, this is definitely the most sun I've seen since I left the Philippines three weeks ago. Wow, these beautiful old doors with the red lanterns up at the top. But yeah, I mean, this is Beijing that I wanted to see, at least. You know, I know it's quiet back here, but here you go, a little cafe. Nice place to sit down and have coffee. This actually might be a really good place to sit down and have coffee. Oh, wow. I would not have expected this back here.
I haven't had any coffee yet today. So I think a coffee is in order. Yeah. Uh, uh, latte? Cold? Mm -hmm. uh, here? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Let's take a seat outside. I guess there's a rooftop, but that's way too hot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So this is what I'm talking about. I mean, like, this is crazy, right? Like, I just had lunch at, like, a super local, like, hole-in-the-wall noodle shop that's probably been around for who knows how long, and now I'm having coffee in this, like, relatively pretty modern place with lots of young people. And uh, this, yeah, this is why hutongs are so amazing because there's just, you never really know what you're gonna find. Um, and just makes for a really great experience. Like that's the best way to travel is to just kind of wander, get lost, stumble upon what you stumble upon and mm -hmm. yeah, just go from there. So it's like an old home, you know, that's been repurposed into this like modern, modern day, kind of coffee shop with pastries and stuff. It's really, really cool. So, maybe I should have sat inside. It's still really hot out here. <laughs> All right, coffee is here. Looks really good. You guys don't need to watch me drink a cup of coffee though. So, I'm going to mix this up, shut the camera off, conserve my battery, and just try to decrease my body temperature by a few degrees. All right, let's take a quick walk up the steps and see what we see. Oh, wow, these are steep. Oh, not easy to do with a GoPro. Oh, wow. See, these are the old roofs that I was talking about. These are like concrete terracotta. There's the stupa for the temple. Oof, my God, it's hot up here. Oh, it's got to be 200 degrees up here. I'm going back down. <laughs> wow, that's steep. Yikes. All right, stupa this way temple this way but yeah so that's what I mean lots to explore back here in the hutongs and this is just one little slice of one neighborhood you know I mean these are all over Beijing I picked this one in particular because some of the other ones can actually get fairly crowded with tourists um, some of them have almost become like tourist attractions whereas this one from what I understood was one of the more authentic uh, hutongs. Where you're likely to not see as many tourists. So there is the temple, literally right there. Let's figure out how to get over there. Nice, nice bit of shade here. Um, man, this thing's actually hard to, kind of hard to get to. I also really like the way that they've preserved the gray. Like it's, um, the gray brick, you gotta watch out for the motorbikes back here. The gray brick 
the way it's been preserved. It's very clean. It looks very good. See, I like it a lot, especially with the red. There's lots of red doors and red shutters and stuff. Barber shops and convenience stores. And it's just, there's like a whole life back here, you know? It would have been really interesting to see what Beijing looked like when it was only this, you know? Before any high rises, before any technology, when it was only this. Man, that is huge. The closer I get to this stupa, the bigger and bigger it is. Yeah, this is really cool. Look at this old door. Look at this old wooden door, wow. That's amazing. Probably multiple family homes back there and very, very cool back here. All cobblestone, well brick, I guess, but cobblestone. All right, I think I'm gonna hit a dead end here. Oh, maybe not. Let's keep going. Nope, that leads into someone's home back there. So I gotta go this way. Oh, oh my God, this is just a big maze. All right, another dead end. It's literally right there. All right, I found it. So I actually had to go out to the main street, kind of outside of the Hutong, and that's where the actual entrance is to the temple. Now, just uh, t one ticket? 20. 20, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so 21 for a ticket, which is like three bucks, a little less than three bucks, or maybe exactly three bucks. And uh, let's see what we, let's see what we got in here. Ni hao. Shishi. Oh, cool. I like that there's no tourists. Digging the music too. Let's see if there's somewhere to get out of the sun a little bit. Uh, music is loud, huh? I like Beijing. It's got really cool stuff like this to see. You got the Hutong, which are really fun to explore. So food here is also pretty incredible. Wow. You know, it doesn't really matter any part of the world that I find myself in where I'm visiting a Buddhist temple or a Hindu temple. I'm always amazed at just the artwork that's on it and the amount of effort it must have taken to paint all of these colors on this temple. It's so beautiful. Looks like you can't go up those stairs right there to walk around the stupa, but you get an idea just how big it is. It's actually really humongous. Wow, that, that's so big. It doesn't actually look that big when you're uh, walking through the hutongs. Wow, massive. So cool. Oh. 
All right, so it is a few hours later now. What's really nice is my hotel, which I'm staying at right here, it's called uh, Happy Dragon Alley Hotel, is actually in another Hutong neighborhood. And so I figured, let's take a walk around here. It's evening now, so not only is it much cooler, but there might be more people out, maybe a little more activity, and uh, just give you guys a little taste of another Hutong neighborhood and maybe compare and contrast the two that uh, we saw today. So let's have a walk around. It's much, much cooler, light breeze, feels, feels much, much better out now. Hi. Really nice terrace here. This is actually something I've noticed. Um, hello. hello. Quite a bit is these are grapevines and you see them growing everywhere in the Hutongs. Like literally uh, grapes. I don't know if you can see up top there, there's all grapes growing. Uh, it's really, it's pretty amazing. I did not think I would see grapes anywhere in China and definitely not in the city of Beijing. Are you getting bored? <laughs> of the hutongs. I find this really fascinating, but if you're still watching this video, I appreciate it. I appreciate your interest in these things. Another thing about, you know, Beijing, similar to Shanghai and really Chinese cities in general, lots of greenery, lots of green space, lots of trees, lots of parks and the hutong we were in earlier didn't really show that, but this did. Oh wow, let's take a, let's just take a little walk down here. I don't know where this is going. If this is someone's home or if this is actually just maybe like a cut through, I don't know. It's really hard to know. I think, I think this is probably someone's house or collection of houses. But you see like home, Maybe another home. I don't want to go back here too much, but you get the idea that they're just really kind of crammed in here. Uh, this is a really beautiful building, especially with the way the sun is coming on it right now, late in the day. Really very nice. So you see these things everywhere and they're for uh, like exercise like this. And uh, you see the whole park here, all these like little, these are all for exercise. And in the mornings, see right here. Like this. Whoa, whoa, sh <laughs> almost fell. In the mornings, particularly older people, you'll see out in parks exercising and doing stuff like this to stay active. And in the evenings, you'll see it too. But yeah, they're a lot better than I am. Oh, I'm falling again. But you see little parks like this everywhere, all over China, really. Keep the joints active. And see these little, I guess these would be like the equivalent of like if you were to walk back there, I think you would find multiple houses that are kind of all in a, like in a section. Um, and I'm not sure if those are considered like streets or, you know, if it's still part of the hutong, like the alleys, but it's kind of how they're organized. You know what I mean? Here's another one right there. Uh, Dongsi hutong. See, I was saying they all have names. So that's what this one is. Oh, hi, little guy. Yeah, so this is, uh, I guess this is part of the hutong. Christmas, Christmas in June. Yeah, all homes back here. Really, really cool. Hi, <laughs> Nihal. Uh, this is uh, Dongsi Hutong. 
Ah, uh, over there. Okay, thank you. So th with the sign that we looked at earlier, this one, I guess it's all this actually, is what that lady was, I think, trying to say. But, you know, I don't, I'm sure I mispronounced it. I'm sure it's not Dongsi. <laughs> It's probably something very different, but and in case you're wondering, like that spelling is the pinyin, which is more or less the uh, pronunciation of the characters. Like pinyin in and of itself has no meaning, right? It's just uh, the the actual like pronunciation of the characters in Latin script. But like pinyin by itself doesn't mean anything. It has no meaning unless you really understand the characters too. And so when you see things written like Dong Si, like that's pinyin. And obviously if you just say Dong Si out of context, that context that has no meaning at all, right? Obviously. So, I mean, even Beijing, that's pinyin, but that has context to it, so. So yeah, I mean, there's lots, there's lots to Beijing, of course, right? There's everything from this all the way to like, you know, the big skyscrapers and fancy buildings, just like in Shanghai. But for me, traveling, this is what I like to see. I like to try and see the local life as much as possible, see how local people are living. Gives me, you know, a better appreciation for a place as opposed to, you know, seeing the skyscrapers more or less. So as you can see, there's really, really interesting things in the hutongs if you're willing to take the time and look. You know, like you could have walked past that bar a million times and you would never know that there's like a awesome cocktail bar behind that door. So really, really cool and uh, just, yeah, really worth the time to explore and walk down the back streets and open some doors and see what you find. Those people were really, really cool too and they spoke really good English. And we talked for a while. They gave me a free shot at the end. So <laughs> really nice. But I'm going to end this one here, guys. Um, thanks for watching, if you're still watching. And have a good night from the back streets of Beijing. Take care. Bye. I can't tell you if I knew it was gonna be good or not, but it ended up being amazing. Oh, the sun is behind me, like this. Whoa, whoa, sh almost fell. Excuse me for a second while I take off all of my gear.